Hi sisters, James Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So a few months ago, I did a video on my channel called Testing Fake Makeup where I went down to Santee Alley and if you are an LA native, you know that that is like the holy grail of all fake products and all like knockoff or really, really cheap goods. And I did a video testing out fake makeup products where I did like knockoffs of all like high-end name brand stuff. You guys absolutely love the video and it is one of the most viewed on my entire channel, so thank you for that. And I got so many comments asking me to do it again. And one of the main comments that I got in the video as well is that I should have gotten the real versions of all the fake products and tested them out half and half, which I was like, oh, yeah. That would have been a really, really smart idea. So, today I'm coming at you with a part two of testing fake makeup. I have a ton of new products that I did not try out in the last video, the real versions and the fake versions as well, so we're gonna do half and half and compare how the real products compare to the fake ones. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> So I actually don't have any base products to test out for you guys. The only foundation that I've ever seen a fake version of is the MAC one that I used in last video. But what I do have is a knockoff beauty blender that I found. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a knockoff beauty blender and a real beauty blender on different sides of my face using my regular foundation and we're gonna see how they actually apply, if they apply the same, if they're different, so yeah. What I find weirdest about this knockoff beauty blender is the fact that it comes in a plastic package that literally says the original beauty blender and I've had many beauty blenders in the past and this is literally the same exact plastic packaging that the regular beauty blenders come in, which is very, very suspicious. But if you take the actual sponge out, it is definitely a different shade of pink, a different shape as well. This one is slightly more fat and the texture is completely different. Oh God, all right, so these are both completely soaked and then wrung out. This is obviously the fake one. It is not changed in size in the slightest, and this is the real Beauty Blender, which is now like probably doubled in size. So I'm gonna grab my Too Faced Born This Way foundation, which is one of my all-time favorites right now, and just pump a little bit on the back of my hand, and then we're going to apply it. So this is literally incredibly hard and not like remotely comfortable in the slightest. You know how makeup gurus are always like, oh my God, I'm beating my face. Like I'm literally, having to beat my face with this product. I'm gonna go ahead and now grab my Real Beauty Blender into the Born This Way foundation and do the rest of my face. Oh, so much better. So the Knockout Beauty Blender I bought at Santee Alley for a total of $9, and the Real Beauty Blender retails at like most makeup stores for I think $20. Obviously you are saving money by getting the fake version, but clearly it is not really working out that well for me. You have to blend it out really, really, really hard, and it does soak up a lot of product as well. So ultimately at the end of the day, you're just losing money because you are using more of your foundation, and I'm assuming your concealer when we get to that stuff in a second, which I am literally horrified for, but literally just spend the extra $11 if you have it of course and get the real version because it pays off so much better. So like I said with the foundation, I didn't find any base dupes. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in the shade Light Medium on both sides and then we're just gonna use the different beauty blenders to blend them out. I am literally hitting myself so hard to actually like blend out and distribute this product which is not what I wanna be doing right now. Using the original is just so much more effortless and not as violent. All right, so now that the base is all on, our next step is going to be to powder. And once again, you guys know that I love my beauty blender for this. So I just have my regular Laura Mercier translucent setting powder and I'm gonna first grab my knockoff beauty blender and dip into the powder. And I am so horrified for this one. I'm first gonna do my nose on the fake half. Oh God. Normally when I do it with my regular beauty blender, it really helps to melt the powder into the skin, which creates a really, really flawless finish. I am definitely not achieving that with this sponge at all, which is why I'm getting like a lot of excess and residue powder on my nose and under my eyes. As you can see, Flashback Mary is trying to make a comeback today and we are not about to have that happen. So my face is all set and I am currently baking at 350 degrees to get my face locked in place and all snatched and ready to go. And of course the next step while I'm always baking is my eyebrows and I do have a knockout product for those and that is the Anastasia Brow Definer. Now I did have a brow definer in the same exact shade and I got dark brown in the fake one but I just went on a trip and happened to leave mine there. So I had to improvise and instead of using the brow definer today I'm gonna use the Anastasia Brow Wiz. They are both in the shade dark brown. I figured the actual shape of the product doesn't really matter that much. I'm just gonna compare it the color, the price, and the formula and how they actually look on the brows. You guys get the point. Um, my dumb ass just shouldn't have lost the product in the first place. Let's go ahead and swatch it on my hand to actually see how the colors compare. So this is the dark brown brow definer. Oh wow. Okay, so the formula is super, super soft. As you can see, it just broke off almost instantly swatching this on my hand, but I'm gonna try that again. 
So as you guys can see, I just went ahead and applied the real dark brown formula from Anastasia, and the fake dark brown is actually darker brown than the real dark brown from actual Anastasia. This is a mess, but you guys should understand what I'm saying at this point. Um, and the real dark brown is actually a lot more gray toned than the fake dark brown as well. This one definitely has a more red undertone, so this is definitely gonna look like more realistic brown hairs on the real side, but let's go ahead and apply the fake version to the left side and the real version to the right side, like we did with the beauty blenders, and let's see which one actually applies better. What I'm instantly noticing right away too is that the point on the fake, oh my god, ow. The point of the actual like tip of the product is not nearly as sharp or defined, despite the fact that it is the Anastasia Brow Definer as the original version. I'm applying these lines and they're coming out very, very thick. And usually I'm able to get a very, very sharp edge, which makes my brow look super, super chiseled out. But as you can see, looking by the tail right here, it is not chiseled out in the slightest. It looks very, very messy. Oh, you're kidding. No! Okay, this eyebrow is literally like throwback to original J. Charles Beauty Instagram block eyebrows. This looks the worst. Normally I would go ahead and do my other brow and then conceal after, but I literally cannot stand to look at this any longer. I'm gonna grab some Tarte Shave Tape and just fix this up with my Morphe E43 brush as always because this is looking bad. I don't think I've ever had to work at fixing an eyebrow that badly ever, like in my entire life as a makeup artist. That took like at least 30 minutes to do this one eyebrow and that should never ever be the case. Like I can sometimes finish my entire makeup routine in 30 minutes if I'm really going fast. So that was awful. I definitely would not recommend this wannabe ass brow definer from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I think this is a total of $14 at Santee Alley and I think the regular one retails for $21. So definitely would not recommend her at all. I'll go with the original because you don't want to end up with a black eyebrow from the original J. Charles Beauty on Instagram. Those are dark days and we are so glad to be away from them. Let's not go back. I think today for the first time ever, my right eyebrow is my better brow today. I don't know, this fake brow definer just really did not do it for me, but the original brow was came to slay and came to save the day. Let's go ahead and move on from the brows. Thank God we've been on this step for way too long and move on to the eyeshadow. So for the eyes today, we're gonna be using one palette that I absolutely stand by and have used many times on this channel, and that is the Morphe Brushes collaboration with Jaclyn Hill. The real version is in this hand and it is $38 at morphebrushes.com or you can use code James for 10% off. And then there is the the fake version, which I got at Santee Alley for a total of $12, so a definite huge price difference, but let's go ahead and actually see if the quality is different because let's be real, they're probably gonna be. A lot of the colors do look very, very similar, but there are some huge noticeable differences such as this shade right here. I mean, this is a shimmery brow bone highlighting color and this is like literally a bright ass neon chartreuse color, which is definitely not even close to what it is supposed to be. This gold shade in the fake version is nowhere near to the gold in the original one. This dark brown shade in the original color, which is a brownie red undertone, is literally another black in the fake palette, so. Oh yeah. So this one obviously is the real version. It is much more pigmented and the color is much deeper and more defined as well. Whereas the fake version definitely is not nearly as shimmery as the real one. It did honestly swatch much farther than I was expected. It's not like awful by any means, but clearly the original palette is a lot better. This is the Brow Bone Highlighting shade, which is absolutely stunning. I love this color in the Jaclyn palette. And this is the Brow Bone Highlighting shade from the fake palette, which is literally just pale, crusty, dusty looking chalk. So I'm first gonna start off with my Morphe M513 brush and dip into this warm torn orange shade right here in the fake palette. And I'm just gonna start off by dusting that in the crease. Oh, that is not pigmented. And then using a clean version of the same brush, I'm gonna go into the same exact shade corresponding in the original Jaclyn palette and do the same thing. Already, as you can see, the original palette has a lot more pigment and payoff and is blending out very, very nicely. Next, I'm gonna grab my M433 brush. This is my all-time favorite fluffy brush for creases and smoky eyes. And I'm gonna grab this light brown shade from the fake palette, and I'm gonna pack this onto the lid. The shadow is definitely not blending out as well as the first shadow did. I honestly thought that I might be shook to the core and have a better version in the end, which I was a little bit spooked about, but this shadow is nowhere near blending out very well. As you can see, it's looking super, super patchy in this like outer crease region. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some more pigment onto the brush and really pack it on there to try to create a more uniform color, but this is not looking as great as I was expecting it to look. Well, I wasn't expecting it to look good, but then I was a little bit shook and now I'm unshook. You get the point. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my other M433 brush and dip into the same exact shade corresponding from the real version of the Jaclyn palette and put that on the other lid. Next, I'm gonna grab my M507 brush and dip into this dark brown shade in the bottom half of the palette and use this to deepen up the smoky eye. 
for being fake shadows, honestly, these have a ton of pigmentation and are going on super nicely, but they're just not blending out, like, in the slightest. This literally looks the worst ever. Like, that is not how a smoky eye should be blunted. Okay, so my camera decided and I didn't catch it in time, but I just used my Morphe M149 pencil brush and dipped it into this blue shade in both the fake version and the real version and applied them, and they are definitely looking very, very different. The real version is a lot more blue and a lot more pigmented, whereas the fake version is a lot more green tone and is nowhere near as pigmented as the real version. There is no sparkle to this whatsoever, so definitely the real version is a lot better. Next, I'm going to grab an E19 brush and dip into the brow bone highlighting shade, which is this brightest yellow in the top corner. Oh god. Oh, oh no. Well that did absolutely nothing. Okay. Let's try that again using the same exact brush, the clean version, and dip into the real brow bone highlighting shade from the Jaclyn palette. Ah, there we go. Okay, so that definitely looks a whole lot better than that musty, crusty, dusty yellow that literally looks like nothing, so. That's good at least. All right, so those are both smoky eyes all complete. From the fake palette, I was honestly really surprised to see that the shadows were pretty pigmented, but as you can see, they really did not blend out at all. There is so much patchiness going on, especially out in this outer corner from the dark brown shade that just did not want to blend at all. And this blue shade on the lower lash line is nowhere near as pigmented as the real version. Whereas on this side, the smoky eye is definitely a lot more blown out and blended. It is a more neutral tone smoky eye, whereas on this side somehow became bright ass orange, which I did not want. Um, there is a nice blue pop a color on the lower lash line which actually shows up and the highlights are also there as well and not looking chalky and invisible whereas on this side they're gone. The real version is obviously a lot more expensive but you're paying for quality, pigmentation, and blendability which this palette obviously does not have so if you're gonna buy any out of the two same theme as everything else so far in this video buy the real version spend a little bit more money and get a great ass product. Moving on! For the highlighter today, we're gonna to be using the iconic Kylie Cosmetics Wet Set. And this is the real version, and this is the fake version. And when you open them up, the pan sizes are obviously a whole lot bigger in the real version than in the fake version. And for the most part, the colors actually look pretty similar, except for the fact that Do Not Disturb is obviously a whole lot more bright ass pink in the fake version than in the real version. To do a swatch comparison, I'm gonna grab Privacy Please on my pointer finger, and then I'm gonna grab it on my middle finger on the other hand. Whoa. Okay, so Privacy Please from the original Kylie palette is ridiculously pigmented. I've actually never tried these highlighters out before. This palette is actually my babe Amanda Ensings, so thank you to her for letting me borrow it. And then the Privacy Please from the fake Kylie palette is a lot less pigmented, as you can see, and definitely nowhere near as like metallic or reflective as the original. It is just kind of like white satin finish, kind of like more like an eyeshadow rather than an actual highlighter. This is really, really stunning. Oh, that was really underwhelming. Okay, so there's literally just like no pigmentation in this whatsoever. This is after three different dips into the highlighter and as you can see, this glow is a little sad. As you can see from literally just one dip into the original palette, it is a whole lot more pigmented, a lot more blinding. The highlight is a lot more sparkly as well, but I honestly really, really like how this looks. Whereas on the fake side, we get nothing. <laughs> Obviously, I can't really split my nose in half, so I'm just gonna use the real version on my nose so it doesn't look the worst ever. Oh wow, that is a blinding highlight. Oh my god. Whoa. Okay, so now that the glow is all complete, I guess, kind of, sorta, um, our last step today is gonna be the Lippity Doodahs, and I think I have the funniest comparison yet. And those are the KKW Cream Lipsticks from Kylie Cosmetics, and <laughs> yeah, this is, this is what we got. <gasps> oh my god. Oh, wait, the, the colors. The most nude light shade in the real version is literally like bright ass orange. This looks like Anastasia Ashton liquid lipstick in the fake version. Let's go ahead and apply these and see what they actually look like next to each other. Oh, it smells like paint. It literally smells like acrylic paint. This is probably so unsafe, but I'm gonna go ahead and apply the shade Kimmy to the fake side of my lips. Okay, so the actual Kimmy smells like nothing, which is great. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the real version onto the real half of my face. You get the point by now. So I know that the KKW cream liquid lipsticks are supposed to not dry down. Obviously, the real version is still like wet looking, whereas the fake version have dried down completely matte. But even just formula aside though, if you're gonna disrespect a brand and all the hours and money that they put into a product by copying them, like, can we at least 
try to get the color like relatively similar. I mean, like what is this? Okay, so normally my last step would obviously be to set my face in place, but this just looks the worst ever, so I definitely do not want to keep this makeup on for any longer. And that is my full face of, well, I guess half face of fake makeup part two, all complete. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video and definitely leave a comment down below and tell me which side of the face you think looks better. After testing out all these products, I'm definitely gonna have to say that the real side of makeup definitely is my winner here. A lot of these fake makeup products cannot even close to compare to the real versions. Listen, I know that the low price tags can sometimes be really really appealing to you guys who are on a budget trust me I get it makeup can sometimes be so so expensive but by putting all these fake products on today I am taking a huge risk a lot of times these fake products are nowhere near the same chemical composition as the real versions they can sometimes contain really really harmful and bad chemicals that you're not supposed to put on your face that you're not supposed to inhale and in, like your lips or your eyes so if you can definitely spend the extra money to get the real versions I mean it's gonna pay off in a formula pigmentation and just like makeup in general so I definitely would not recommend any of these products at all. All right, sisters, if you guys enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up down below. I definitely would like to turn this testing fake makeup videos into like a full-on series where I go to Santee Alley and just get fake products all the time. I mean, these guys are really freaking quick. Anytime that there's a new release, they always have them like instantaneously. So I would love to keep up with that and show you guys the comparisons between the reels and the fakes because I think it is very, very interesting to learn as a consumer. And as well, by giving it a thumbs up, it lets me know that you like it. So definitely share the love down below. If you have not already, make sure to click that big red subscribe button and click that little bell icon to turn on post notifications. We are so close to 2 million subscribers on here, which is so crazy. Oh my God. Join the sisterhood. I promise it is a wonderful time. If you'd like to follow me on a makeup journey, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. They're both just James Charles. And my Snapchat for more behind the scenes fun type of stuff is James Charles with an extra S after Charles. This week's shout out goes to Sister Jess. Thank you so much, girl, for always following and supporting. You know I love you so much. And if you would like to be at next week's Sister shout out, make sure to always follow me on Twitter and Snapchat and retweet my video links when they go live. Don't forget to check out sisters-apparel.com as well for all the sisters merch. My official clothing line, there's a ton of really cute stuff on there which you should definitely check out. And yeah, I think that is all I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.